Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name Good morning and welcome to you all, wherever you are, wherever you have decided to worship with us here at St. Mark's Anglican Lutheran Church in Midland. It's good to be reminded that the community of faith is so much wider and bigger than meets the eye, because let me assure you, it feels very strange to me and not just to me to be here life on a sunday morning but you most of you are not it teaches me a lot about how important each and every one truly is but um, as the pandemic goes on and we're facing the challenges of the omicron variant uh, we have decided that only those participating in our live stream worship services and their immediate social bubble will be able to attend in person. Um, this and other news you will find on the fridge page that has been mailed out this morning. And if you wish to join our mailing list, please let us know, get in touch with us by phone or email, and we will do so. We also want to keep several persons on our prayer lists. We pray for those whose medical procedures are on hold, and we have several members for who that is the case. We pray for those who are isolated again in retirement homes or assisted living. And let me assure all of us that does have a significant impact on those and on their family. And let us keep in prayer also the overworked medical staff in those facilities and in our hospital and medical practices. With this and everything else that we carry with us, with our joys and with our sorrows, we now come before God 
in this worship service and you are invited invited to join with us as much as possible feel free to stand when we stand feel free to pray along and fully be part of our worshiping together let us do so now The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us join with one another in prayer. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the Spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. this morning that I'm not supposed to touch her. I don't know what's going on. Sue, what, what are you doing there in front of a glass of water? I could need some. Some of the, the stuff from the mask keeps coming into my mouth. I could see, use some of the water. No. Oh, why not? I have to pick her up. I'm sorry, I cannot talk without, without Sue being activated. Well, it's okay, but I want to look. Why? Why? What is it? What is it? What's your obsession with the glass of water there? Well, I'm watching when it will turn to wine. Oh, Sue, <laughs> I think you're getting something wrong here. No. Today we hear how Jesus turns water into wine. And Jesus is here with us, you say. So I don't want to miss it when the water will become wine. Mm, I don't think Jesus wanted to say that every glass of water in church would become wine. No, but we have wine for communion. Yeah, but it's not like we, we, we take water and it turns into wine. No, that's funny. Do you mean you go and buy wine when Jesus couldn't turn the water into wine? Oh, Sue, so, um, 
you know, when Jesus does these things, he wants to teach us something very special. It's not about magic. Well, I sure can't turn water into wine. And I'm glad because I wouldn't know what happened to you if you had too much wine to drink. Don't worry, I'm just a puppet. But I will watch anyway, okay? Just in case. Oh, it's always good to be observant and aware. So if you're having fun watching that glass of water, please feel free to do so. Can you turn it into wine? No. I tried once in with a confirmation class and it ended up in a big embarrassment. I won't do it again. Good. I'll watch. That's okay. And we will listen. Listen to the Word of God. first lesson is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 62. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Your justice like the great deep, you save both man and beast, O Lord. We, we feast, feast on, on the, the riches, riches of, of your, your house, house, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. We feast, feast on, on the, the riches, riches of, of your, your house, house, O Lord. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. We, we feast, feast on, on the, the riches, riches of, of your, your house, house, O Lord. Lord. The second letter is from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12. Paul writes, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to the idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge 
according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. Listen for the leading of the spirit. Thanks be to God. And now let us prepare to receive the good news, the holy gospel for this day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us now listen to the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of John from the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Good news, the gospel of Christ. We praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the love of God be our inspiration and may God's goodness shine forth through our meditation. 
Amen. Please be seated. Friends, Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. There are clear differences between the Gospels. It's not just the Christmas stories who are quite different, that are quite different. John will talk specifically throughout his Gospel about seven signs. Mark, Matthew, and Luke talk about many more miracles. To now ask who is right and which of the Gospels may be wrong would not be a helpful question. All of the Gospels are right. They all tell us about Christ and God's plan with God's creation. And each of the Gospels at the same time is quite unique and certainly not at all wrong. It's like this. If we took a walk around our church on the outside and carefully described what we see from all four sides, we'd end up with very different views. So who would be right and who would be wrong? When the Gospel of John talks about Jesus' seven signs, there is a point, a purpose in this. It is not just to say that Jesus didn't, didn't do many more astounding, unexpected and inexplicable things. Seven was, in John's circle, a sign of completeness, of fullness. Now, when it comes to these signs, obviously, we can look at them in very different ways. I remember a young boy in a vacation Bible school one year. On the second day, after we had introduced one of Jesus' miracles the day before, this boy showed up with his magic kit wanting to perform some tricks of his own. It was a wonderful and very useful opportunity for great learning for us all. You see, Jesus doesn't do magic when he turns water into wine. Magic is often done for entertainment, and for fun. And if you're a little bit like me, any magic trick has me always on the edge, trying to figure it out. How did they do it? Here's the first takeaway from our gospel this morning. The gospels never ever show us Jesus doing what he does for entertainment. We're not invited to wonder about this, how did they do it? Yes, I'm sure there was and is more fun and lightheartedness in the Gospels than we are sometimes willing to admit. Jesus most likely was using humor quite a bit. Like, who would not smile at imagining a camel going through the eye of a needle. But Jesus was not an act at that wedding reception in Cana. Speaking of which, miracle workers were commonplace back then. A real competition was going on between them. It, People were surrounded by miracle workers, pretty much like we today are surrounded 
by advertising all the time. It was everywhere, and it is stunning what we are being promised in our advertisements. If we just buy such and such, and we're certainly being promised miraculous things if we buy into it. And this is the second way, takeaway of our story. The Gospels never ever showed us Jesus doing what he does for his own benefit. His miracles are not about him. This might come to us as a surprise, but it is true. Jesus never needed or asked for others to approve of what he was and was doing. Nor did he ever ask for admiration. During his ministry, people were in awe of the miracles Jesus could do. When he turned that water into wine, healed the sick, restored sight to people, or made a few loaves of bread and fish feed thousands, people were amazed. But Jesus did these things to teach important spiritual lessons and to help people. And this is the third takeaway. The Gospels always show us Jesus doing what he does as signs. Jesus shows us something about God. Today's texts and images reveal especially good news. The people of Israel had believed in themselves and their own abilities. They had ignored the voices that called them back to faith. And it got them into very serious trouble and to near extinction. Yet God stayed with them as they returned to their faith in God. We heard from the prophet Isaiah sharing this good news. The people of Israel will come home. The troubles will end and there will be a restoration. I hear this message along with the other reminders this morning as encouraging news. God is with us during the difficult times of the pandemic. And I believe there is good and practical guidance coming to us in our faith. I also see the fruit of much fatalistic thinking and not Christ-centered thinking. And that's where Paul's message encourages me again. The divisions amongst us, the divisions in the church in Corinth are being named. And the apostle is trying to remind them of what unites them. The same spirit giving us gifts to serve the common good. Please notice that. Not gifts to serve ourselves, but to serve the common good. And the gospel this morning is probably the strongest message of hope for us. You see, weddings are probably, and they certainly were in Jesus' time, the happiest of all occasions. Weddings were huge celebrations, lasting for days or up to a week. Weddings included so many people, the whole village was welcome. And even Jesus' friends were all invited. 
And the wine in our sorry, sorry, my dear beer drinkers, the wine was considered a symbol of happiness, of joy and exuberance. Jesus is showing us here the good intentions God has for all of God's creation. Blessings, happiness, and joy are promised. The waters of life, murky, unclean, and at times contained with harmful qualities, the waters of everyday life are, by the power of our loving God, turned into a blessing. Nobody is to be embarrassed, and the celebration can resume. Yes, I hear this today as a prophecy for us all. We have been given the gifts of life. We have been instructed to pray, to engage in inner questioning, to be silent, to listen, and to think for ourselves. As we practice these gifts and apply them regularly, the promise stands clear. A watered-down life will be enriched, healed, completed. And you and I have clearly joined the great banquet, the feast of living in Christ. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. May it be so for you, for me, for all of God's creation. Amen. The silence, now the peace, now the empty hands uplifted, now the kneeling, now the plea.
Let us now take a moment to reflect on what we can give back to God from all those blessings we receive. And we continue now in prayer. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic barriers. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. God of grace, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant farm, farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who attend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policymakers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter and all who speak peace. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You see us for who we are, and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transition. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. And we pray today for Michael, Brendan David, Kurt and Rosemary, and Ken, and for Sandy and Kathy. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give life, thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and all who have modeled the way, courageous faith, God of grace, <clears throat> hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises of God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And together we pray with the words Jesus has given us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My peace I give unto you. It's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live. My peace I give unto you. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the God of all hope, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Fill us with peace and consolation so that we may abound in hope through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh for us. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.